You're watching The Isaiah Factor, Uncensored. And welcome back to the second half of The Factor Uncensored. And of course, we'll have more on Chris Brown in just a moment, plus the controversy on Wiz Khalifa. But first, tonight we're taking you to Florida, home of America's most iconic strip clubs. City leaders over in Jacksonville are concerned about the safety of young women looking for a career in those clubs, just like the same problems we have in Texas, New York, as well as California. They have gone over the heads of club managers and passed a new ordinance that bans underage dancers. No one under 18. Councilwoman Leanna Cumber hopes the new rules cut off the pipeline to human trafficking. Tell us how bad it got for you guys there in Jacksonville. Yeah, I mean, we have, we have about 21 clubs and we Strip unfortunately- clubs. Strip clubs, yes. And we are unfortunately a hub for human trafficking. There are a variety of reasons for that, but the strip clubs are part of that equation. So what we're trying to do is make sure that the girls who are trafficked, who are mo more, li more likely to be trafficked, those under 21, are not in these situations where they're in these clubs and very likely to be trafficked. And once they're trafficked, how bad does their life get? How does their life change? What are you hearing? What are some of the stories maybe law enforcement officers are, are telling you? Yeah, look, it's really hard. And what happens here is these girls are being groomed and recruited in the high schools to go and strip in the strip clubs. And so if they're going to the strip clubs when they're 15, 16, 17, 18 years old, then they're getting into a world that it's very hard to get out of. And there are statistics that show that girls who are trafficked that are addicted to drugs are addicted to drugs because of that trafficking, if they've been trafficked under the age of 21. And so all the statistics show that if we can keep the girls out of strip clubs, out of these situations where they're likely to be trafficked, then they have such a better chance at a great life. And many of them many times use the drugs to numb themselves or yes. the pimps or those who yes. are grooming them, put them on the drugs to maintain control. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. I mean, it's interesting because the flip side of the statistic is women who are trafficked who are on drugs but are over 21 tend to be addicted to drugs or tend to be trafficked because they're addicted to drugs. When they're under 21, they tend to be addicted to drugs because of the trafficking, to cope with the trafficking. And as a mom of an eight-year-old little girl, no one raises their daughter in the hopes that when she's in 11th and 12th grade, she'll be groomed and recruited to go stripping clubs. It just doesn't no happen. one, no one does that. No one does that. Now, let's talk about the grooming a little bit. Are they using social media? How are they getting to these high school age girls? Yeah, absolutely. They're using social media. They're having, I mean, other girls who are in high school who are 18 are stripping at the clubs and they'll be told to go and recruit other girls to come with them, other high school girls. And often the IDs that are used, they're IDs of older sisters or older girls that they know. And so they can go into the clubs. And so what we also did here was create essentially licenses for the dancers. And what it does is it actually protects the clubs because the licenses are applied for through our sheriff's office. And so there's a background check, there's proof of age and so forth. So it protects the clubs from having girls come in who have fake IDs or you know whose ID is expired or what have you. And we're actually the last city in Florida to have these cards. So we've been, it's part of our challenge with being a place for trafficking is it's just so much easier here to traffic girls because we haven't had these licensing schemes to date. And council member, why were you the last? Was there some pushback from some club owners or some sources that you couldn't really pinpoint? Why did it take Jacksonville so long in Florida to get these dance cards in place to prevent those under 18 from dancing? Yeah, you know, I think it's, I got on council in 2019 and passed a landmark sex trafficking bill 
that a few months after I got on. So I think it was just a focus. It's something that I've been very focused on and it really wanted to see what the city could do to curb sex trafficking and human trafficking. And so to be honest, I just don't think there was much of a focus on the strip clubs at all. They kind of, you know, operated in the shadows. And so I've been bringing them out if they want to be treated like legitimate businesses then they need to start acting like it and they need to be regulated as such. Absolutely. Now, obviously, uh, with all good intentions, you put this, uh, I think it's an ordinance there or is it yes. a law there? Yes. Ordinance. When it, it's the yes. city, it's an ordinance. Yes. So how do you enforce this? Will there be spot checks by the sheriff's department or a tip line for uh, people who may see someone underage or know of someone underage working in a club that may have bypassed the process that you put in place. Yeah, we have both of those things. We have both of those things. So that's how the enforcement will happen. And because in the bill, we also have, there's not just liability from on the part of the dancer, if a dancer goes in and strips without a card, but there's actually liability on everyone working in the club, the manager, as well as the owner of the strip club. So we wanted to make sure that we weren't just punishing the girls who were trying to go in, but we were actually also punishing the owners of the clubs and the managers who were really taking advantage of them. So it's really a top-down ordinance. So we're hoping that that will help keep people in compliance. And like I said, it's they really protect the clubs from not having girls there who should not be dancing there. And an important point you made was you didn't just want to punish the girls, any particular plans in the works or something already on the books to help young women who want to get out of that industry in Jacksonville? Yeah, we have really great resources here. We have an organization called Rethreaded, which just does amazing work to not just get women out, but really train them for jobs and really get them good, high paying jobs. And so we have amazing resources kind of on the back end. And so as a city council member, my goal is to really think about how government can be proactive and think about how do we prevent it? So how do we not just rely on the nonprofits, which have been amazing here to deal with the survivors but how do we reduce the number of survivors we have by actually making a, you know, creating a reduction in sex trafficking as a whole? So that's what I've been really focused on. All right. Jacksonville City Council Member Leanna Cumbers joining us from Jacksonville here on The Factor tonight. We appreciate your time. 